Live from New York City, it's the Hattie Fishburn Show. I'm your announcer, Graham Fishburn. Tonight's special guest is Hollywood writer and producer, China Clark. Here's Hattie. New York is the entertainment capital of the world. We are doing a series of shows about the careers in show business. And today we have one of the most important people in the creative process, and that is the writer. Our guest for today is Miss China Clark, who is a producer, writer, a literary agent, and has been around the business for 15 years or more. Is that right? Yes. Welcome to our show. Thank you. Okay. Um, as we both are from previous conversations, we're involved in the process of working with young people. Yes. Um, we have taught either by osmosis, regular classroom work, etc. How would you advise a young person who's interested in uh, the entertainment industry, but who does not act and who is not funny? Okay. How would you get a, a, a group of people motivated to become writers and give them the confidence that they can be writers? Well. I'd start off by uh, giving these young people a very healthy respect in their ideas. Because our business, it's really ran on ideas. And I'd start uh, each student with uh, giving him and her confidence in their ideas. Okay, so confidence is the key. Yeah, uh, but confidence in what their vision of okay. life, their okay. individual vision of life. How soon? How soon in the learning process? Almost. Okay, go ahead. No, I'm just saying, is it kindergarten? Is it first grade? Is it elementary? Almost immediately. It's, it's even before kindergarten. When you can uh, talk to them and make contact with them and they understand you almost immediately. Okay. See, we don't have as many creative artists as we should have because the kids are not taught to have a respect for their own ideas. Well, how could we get this in the school system? How, if, if this lady over here had a five-year-old and she had a seven-year-old, how are you going to say to that kid, you can become a writer, you can make a difference, your story is important. Mm -hmm. You, uh, you encourage them to uh, start to tell you stories. But you know how the public school systems are. Now, mm -hmm. be realistic. Mm -hmm. Here you are teaching with 30 kids, five are jumping up on the ceiling, mm -hmm. three are sleeping in the back. Some have come in from parents where the situation is not amenable to learning. Mm -hmm. How are you going to get them? Now, that's, that's, it's a difficult problem, but I do, I've done this for many, many years, and from small children to college students to <clears throat> prisoners. Okay. Um, and what I do is I get them to start to think what they have to say is important. Okay. I get them first to talk. And that is the key. Okay. You get them first to talk. And you, you don't make them feel that, uh, you know, writing is, is so difficult. I was or about to say. It has to be like Shakespeare to be a good writer. Or you have to have a stream of consciousness like James Joyce. Right, okay. And we start <clears throat> with the writer's thoughts from the littlest one, you know. And we teach him that his... Writing, his thoughts become his writing. Okay, let me just ask you this now. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if you you have been around the entertainment field for many years. Yes. What do you say to children who want to be creative? Mm -hmm. And the parents will say, you must get a job. You can't make a living writing. I mean, come on, you got to have a nine to five to, to make it in this society. Yes. What do you say to, to that youngster mm -hmm. to give him um, that, that fighting spirit mm -hmm. to, to say to his parents, I want to be a writer and I can't make a living? Mm -hmm. What do you say? What do you say? I say to him or her, you have to follow your dream. You've got to really listen to your own inner mind. 
And the more you listen, <clears throat> the stronger it gets. Okay. And you must follow that because ultimately what happens when you grow up, your parents will not be there. And yeah, but they, they won't be there. But you're talking elementary school students now. You're talking about America is kind of conservative still, even though in, you know, on the East Coast and the West Coast you have entertainment industries. But basically most parents in America want their kids to be a fireman, policeman, civil service worker, teacher, doctor, lawyer. And if they're a little bright, they'll say, go to graduate school, yeah. go to law school. Well, then, uh, but some uh, uh, writers uh, that go to graduate school or go to law school, they're fine writers because I've taught these people oh, okay. how to write screenplays and teleplays. Okay. So some of them are fine writers because they get that basic education. So getting your basic education and your reading, your writing, your arithmetic, just your basic knowledge mm -hmm. is not going to stop you from being a writer okay. or following your dream. Okay, so you're talking about following your dream mm -hmm. and you can make a living being a writer. Yes. All right. Let me ask you a little something else about your agency. Yes. Um, a lot of our kids and a lot of our adults also don't really know what a literary agent is, how that differs from... Um, a manager or a talent agent. What is a literary agent? Um, in, in words that our students can, can understand, can what understand. do you do? What is it and what do you do? Okay, what I do is I'm, I'm a little different from your run-of-the-mill uh, literary agent because most of my uh, clients I have personally developed as writers. Okay, so you start from scratch. So I start with my clients from scratch, okay. and I help them through the process of writing a screenplay oh. or a teleplay. And then what you do is you try to sell <clears throat> the writer's work. Okay. You try to sell his screenplay, and I deal with screenplays and teleplays. Oh, good, good. And uh, then what you try to do is also get... Um, assignments for the writers. For the writers, okay. So, uh, but when you develop him or her and they have one really, really good script, uh -huh. that becomes the writer's calling card. Oh, okay. So, we, so, mm -hmm. so I have some stuff. So could I just send it to you and see if you take a look? Or just not me, but anybody out there. Anybody out right. there. You have something called China Light Pictures or China Light Productions. Yes. Tell us what that's about. Okay, China Light's Pictures came out of um, our, um, our agency. Okay. <clears throat> what happened is, is we started developing some wonderful writers. Uh, Dr. Douglas Warnell is one, and Joe Monteperto, and... Kimberly Jackson and um, uh, Mariana, and uh, we had all these wonderful scripts, and we wanted to get them done and get them produced. And of course, you know, and you get in that Hollywood uh, mill. Oh, we love the script, China. We'll get back to you. We'll be getting back to you. I want to get back to you. Yeah, right, right. For that forever, and it's a wonderful script. Everybody in these, the office has read it. We'll get back to you, and oh no, we're not going to go with that. So we got kind of pretty disgusted with that. Piece. All right. So what you did then, you developed, you <clears throat> made your own company yes, to facilitate it. your own. Uh, yes clients yes. and your your clients that you were developing your developing yes. talent also yes so okay. we're, we're developing the talent we're the, developing the scripts and we're producing the movies now. okay oh, that sounds really interesting and i know that there are many youngsters and older people too who really don't know where to start in terms of writing and don't know what how you that you really need an agent that's different from a talent agent to yes. get your work are seen and done and heard and get it marketed out into the marketplace. Okay, we know that um, in New York and L.A. are the pop places to be. Yeah. What about the, the, the youngster who's in the middle of the country or who is in a southern state or who's in, um, who really is not near a metropolitan area? Mm -hmm. How would they get into this industry? How do they what would get, they do? They get into the flow of it. How would they do well, that? What they would do is many times in, in these places they have wonderful um, 
theater group. Okay, theater group. Uh, join a theater group. Mm -hmm. You know, become a writer for a local theater group. Okay. Uh, join a local writer's group. Okay. And, uh, you know, begin to work with a group there. And uh, I get submissions from all over the world, actually. So um, you can get the Ross Report. Okay. And in that, it gives you the names of all the literary agents. And uh, you can send your work to them. Okay, but how realistic is it if I'm just a 10th grader mm -hmm. in Kalamazoo, mm -hmm. and I have written this wonderful script, and my high school teacher said it's great, yeah. And I may be taking it to the church or the community group. Yes. How realistic is it to give our youngsters this this hope? Um, I call it like false hope. We say like, like, you can do it. You can become rich. You can become president of the United States. Yes. And we say that with tongue in cheek. Yes. How realistic is it to to give our youngsters that that goal to reach? And how realistic is it? Is he going to reach it? Yes, we must give him that goal. We must. Why, be why, why, why? Because that's the part of the creative process. Okay. And it's, it's so important, a part of the creative process. And every creative person, without that hope, we wouldn't sing, we wouldn't dance, okay. we wouldn't write. Okay. So that is such a vital part of it. Okay, one little other little legality here. Uh -huh. I, I, I kind of remember. When a script is sent yes. and it doesn't have that script release document in it and it doesn't have it on the outside of the envelope mm -hmm. will you look at unsolicited material yes i will okay. uh, a lot of the other agents and places they won't okay but uh yes i do look at unsolicited material okay because i know that's a problem if you send something out uh -huh. you don't have an agent you don't have the um the slip in there, then it goes in the round file. We know the round file is the wastebasket. Yes. All right, a lot of stuff will go right in there. Yes. Right. No, I read everything that I get. Okay. Yes. Well, this is wonderful because a lot of folks just send stuff out and they never hear from it again. Yeah. Okay, tell us a little bit about, you said you were working on something called your Bessie Smith Project. What's yes. that? And uh, my Bessie Smith Project is, it's a play about, of course, the great black blues singer, Bessie Smith. And um, we did it last year in Berlin. Oh, okay. And, uh, oh, they just absolutely loved it in Europe. So now what we're doing here is we're planning another production of it in a New York production. And we're also uh, planning a movie. Oh. So I'm, I'm also doing a movie script for oh, Betsy. For that, okay. And we're doing a play here. Is that, is that, did I hear something about that when say Donna Ross wanted to play Bessie Smith or was it uh, Lynn Whitfield yes, I mean, or uh, one, many of the women? Yes, this, this, I, I think the script has had, not mine, Okay. but uh, I think Horton Foote wrote a script that circulated every, everywhere. I think the last time I heard that um, uh, a rapper, a famous rapper, uh, was going to play Bessie Smith. Hmm. Uh, so, I mean, a lot of people have talked about, about it. doing uh -huh. it and wanted to do it, but the movie project seems to never get off the ground. Is it because of the big dollar sign, or is it some other reason? Yeah, I think the last time, uh, this is just what I heard, that the last time it was because it would cost too much. I think they said $25 million Ooh, for a particular Well, that's not really a lot for a movie, but... Script. Right. And they didn't want to put that much money. But uh, the one that I'm producing, I'm going to uh, do it for about uh, 5 to $10 million. So... Listen, China, we just want to stop right here for a minute. Yeah. We have some guests in our audience who would like to get some questions oh. uh, about you and your work and uh, just anything. Yeah. Okay? Uh, yes, Ms. Clark. Um, how do you like being a professor at City College? Well, I absolutely love um, teaching at City College. Um, I have the most wonderful students. 
and uh, we're developing about 40 or 50 marvelous scripts. And what I love about it is that each one of the scripts, they're all different. All different, full of creativity. And for me, you know, this is the hope of the future. So when we see movies and we right. see television shows, we see all this individual vision. Okay. Uh, we have another question? Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. You were talking earlier about uh, people sending scripts in to, like, your agency. Yes. Uh, should they be copywritten? Should people go through that process yes. of doing everything? Cause... Absolutely. Absolutely. You should always copyright it with Washington or the Writers Guild. But by law, once you uh, write a script, it is yours. You own it. There is a natural copyright that says you own it. Yes, but what about this incident where um, the movie Coming to America, the writer said that Eddie Murphy had stolen his, his concept, and that happens, you, you hear it a, a lot. No, if you send something in and somebody yeah. reads it, and then yeah. a year later, it's your script with a little bit of changes in it, what's what's that about? Yeah, well, I, you know what? I don't think Eddie Murphy actually took that and stole it. You know, I think that in Hollywood, the ideas go around and around and around. And I think when you see or hear of so many ideas, something similar may slip into your work. Uh -huh. But I'm not saying that people don't, you know, don't steal. Right. steal. Uh -huh. But that's why when you see one movie, you see about three or four movies exactly like it. It's almost like we all had the same idea at the same time. It's okay. I, I, personally... Professionally, I never thought about it. Yeah. But I guess if you got 10,000 people writing, some of the ideas are bound to be the yeah. same. Yes. And I think somewhere they said there's only 17 stories in storylines anyway. Yeah, oh, some 20 or constantly. something, and you kind of like yeah. juggle them around yeah. and that kind of thing. And they go on constantly. Right, right. So <clears throat> what I think is, is that, um, you know, I don't know how Eddie got the idea or... We want to talk about his. Uh, that was just okay. an example. All right, that's an example. We don't want to get on that one, but I know he went to court and he, he yeah, did that's, that. That's and I think this young man was kind of concerned about how you, can you keep somebody from stealing your work. Yes, right. but, you, but I just want to say, don't be so afraid that someone's going to steal that you don't set Produce. out uh -huh. and do it. But okay. always Washington Copyright or Writer's Guild. Mm -hmm. It's okay. amazing. You have one more question here? Yes. Is there a specific structure that one must follow when writing a screenplay? Yes, there is a specific structure. And I think what we need to do is we need to learn everything we can about screenplay and teleplay form, format and structure. You know, before we, it's all right for us to write our ideas down. Before we start to say, well, you know, I'm a screenwriter, I'm a teleplay writer, we should learn all there is to learn about the form. We should master the form. So how could you do that? I mean, here I am, a working mother. Yes. I have two kids. I want to write. I have all these ideas in my head. I can't afford to come to college. I don't have the time. What could I do? All right. There are some really wonderful um, night classes in okay. New York that they give for uh, screenplay, teleplay writing. I had one going for about 10 years okay. right here in New York, really reasonable, uh -uh. where you can go and you can learn the fundamentals of screenplay and teleplay. There are some wonderful books. I was about to say, yeah, what about yes, books? Yes, there's wonderful books, you know. Go to your bookstore and go to the screenplay, teleplay, writing section. Okay. And just get all the books that you can possibly get. Okay. And they're wonderful books, and they really teach you the form. What about, um, where do you see yourself and your company um, in another five or ten years? All right, where I see my company, China Lights Pictures, is that... In five years, we've uh, produced at least four movies, okay. and that I'm living between um, New York and Berlin. How did you happen to get to Berlin? Well, I was invited there to lecture on um, screenplay, teleplay writing, and to do my play, Bessie, 
Mrs. Smith, Mrs. okay. Mm -hmm. And I got there, and I was treated so lovely. Oh, okay. And I just fell in love so, with the city. Okay. You know, I, I went to the Berlin Wall, and I saw it's down. Right, it's down now, right. All my life. Yes. I'm, who would have thought that? It would have come down, right. You so, I mean, know. I was just so inspired right, right. that tyranny mm -hmm. was leaving the whole world. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I just love the city. It's okay. a really nice friend. So, but you'll be commuting instead yes, of from East Coast to I, West Coast. Yes, you'll be a, what go. we're doing now is we're getting an apartment now in Berlin. So, we're going to have a small office there. Uh -huh. Because for what we're doing, Berlin is a really great That's city it. to okay. be, be right. there for film distribution uh -huh. and... Uh, it's going to be good for okay. China life. All right. We are, I have a book here from uh, UCLA, and it ha the catalog, and it has so many areas. I was not aware that there was such things as getting a certificate in comedy. All right, comedy writing. Yeah. Um, was not aware of all the music, the electronic music you can get a certificate in, and and um, public relations, and and publishing as it has to do with the entertainment industry. All of these careers that do not talk about the person who's in front of the camera. And I was wondering if you could give us some input as to where you see African Americans behind the camera in the creative process but also in the decision-making process. Because, you know, once you write something, yes. somebody purchases it, um, you have a limited kind of control over it. Yes. Where do you see African Americans in terms of the decision-making process in the entertainment industry yes. worldwide? I see them uh, developing, uh, either writing their, their own scripts or uh, developing those scripts. And I see them uh, producing producing okay. and getting distribution for films and I think in order to get you know uh, the, the, the power and I, and I don't mean power in a negative sense I no mean, I mean the power, power just to, to make show, a decision about really what's going to make decisions right. show positive images you must do it yourself well you know somebody said to me some time ago that a producer and a lot of times our youngsters don't know what producing mean yes. but somebody said you get a chicken farmer who has a lot of excess money, uh -huh. and he wants to invest in something, and you convince him to invest in your project. Yes. In other words, you need money from people who have the money there, um, extra money, let's say, not the rent money, the food money, mm -hmm. but to invest in your project, and you're going to watch that money for that person, and hopefully there's a return made on it. Yes. And, and, the, and the reason for that, let's say if you don't make money on it, mm -hmm. this particular former will not be out of pocket money because this is the money he had laying money that's laying around is that is that kind of the definition of producing the person who goes out and gets money yes but <clears throat> as i see myself as a producer but money is uh, just one part of it okay you have to come up with the, the right material do you know you come up with the right material and you don't need a lot of money to start with that but then you have to get in the process of getting money. And that is the difficult part, of course. Okay. So you have to really get it from people. But, right, if you get the money now, let's say I'm going out and I'm canvassing my friends and businesses okay. to get this money, yes. do I need a legal team and an accountant or a CPA firm yes. to put this money in the proper place and, and divide up the profits once they come in yes. and to show how much money I have spent for each uh, each you need line. your accountant, you need your lawyer, and this is where, you know, my lawyer is uh, a black woman, and so uh, uh, my associate producer is a black woman. Okay. Um, so... We're doing it. We're doing it. Okay, yes. great. Listen, China, so glad you could come. Thank you. Uh, we wish you much luck with your Bessie Smith project. Thank you. We hope that you raise your $10 million so you can get it going. Right. And we're glad to see you and come back again. Thank you. Okay? All right. So much. This is Hattie Fishburne, uh, Entertainment uh, Careers and Show Business from New York City.